but they can say and can't say what they can and can't do, and apparently this month, but what they can and can't wear. The discussion, which can even barely be called one, stemmed from this. You know, controversy is erupting over uniforms that many are blasting as sexist. Some may wonder, what's the big deal with the uniforms? Well, are the uniforms that female gymnasts wear, are they too revealing? And do they create scenarios where the athletes are sexualized? Apparently, some gymnasts, particularly female gymnasts, feel like it does. So, at the Tokyo Olympics two years ago, a new story unfolded, one as extraordinary as the exquisite tumbles and water slicing strokes, the explosive lifts, and dramatic finishes. As the world watched, women athletes said, enough. For one, Simone Biles, the most decorated gymnast in the world and a survivor of sexual abuse by former USA Gymnastics team doctor Larry Nassar, prioritized her well-being over an audience hungry for her performance, withdrawing from the team final and the individual all-around competition because she had to do what's right for me and focus on my mental health. Then, the German gymnast controversially traded high-cut leotards for full-body unitards a repudiation of the persistent mandate, explicit and implied, that their appearance matters as much as, or more than, their comfort or talent. As you can imagine, this caused a lot of chaos and buzz in the community, although it was not the first time the said athletes came to the competition in their new attire. Weeks before the Olympics, German artistic gymnast Sarah Voss did not break any rules, but she did show up in a full-body suit at the European Artistic Gymnastics Championships, which defied convention. Until that point, women and girls have only covered their legs in international competition for religious reasons. Voss, for her part, said she was proud of her decision and she was supported by her country's gymnastics federation. Two teammates then did the same soon after, wearing full body suits during the women's all-around final. The German Federation, DTB, said its gymnasts performing in the Swiss city of Basel were taking a stand against sexualization in gymnastics, adding that the issue had become all the more important to prevent sexual abuse. We hope gymnasts uncomfortable in the usual outfits will feel emboldened to follow our example, said Voss. Kim Bowie, a now-retired German artistic gymnast, had initially performed in a controversial leotard a few days prior, but said they had wanted to set an example as a team. Elizabeth Seitz, too, said that it was one less thing to worry about, as there was no risk of revealing anything by accident. But before we continue, let's define what can be constituted as sexualization. Sexualization is frequently linked to the objectification of women and less commonly men. According to the American Psychology Association, sexualization ties a person's value to solely their sexual appearance or behavior, disregarding their other characteristics. Studies also revealed that girls who are viewed, portrayed, and treated as objects are often led to self-objectify, which causes the development of many mental health issues. Case in point, Simone Biles' withdrawal from the Olympics to prioritize her mental health. Anyhow, a major portion of the sexualization of women comes from athletics. According to a study published by the Edinburgh Dunedin Academic Press, 34% of female athletes have been sexually abused by a coach, medical personnel, or trainer. What's more, women athletes are frequently scrutinized in regards to their appearance rather than skill. Many women's sports teams are required to wear very little amounts of clothing, which adds to pre-existing issues of objectification. A major example of this comes from women's gymnastics. For decades, the standard for women's gymnastics uniforms has been tight, bikini-cut leotards. The German team's uniform at the Tokyo Olympics was viewed by many as an effort to push back against the sexualization of traditional uniforms. Voss expressed, Every time you don't feel safe, it's distracting you from what you want to perform. I think that feeling safe and not thinking about what other people can or cannot see is quite relieving when you can compete like that. She also told BBC Radio 5 that, if they feel safe, they can wear a normal leotard if they like. If there is a certain point that they think they would feel better in a long leotard, then they should do it. 
she noted that some girls quit what she refers to as a beautiful sport because of having to wear leotards. So it's great to have an option for everyone to stay in the sport they love and not think about anything else about their body, just about their performance. We women all want to feel good in our skin. In the sport of gymnastics, it gets harder and harder as you grow out of your child's body. Voss said about the decision to switch to a unitard. As a little girl, I didn't see the tight gym outfits as such a big deal. But when puberty began, when my period came, I began feeling increasingly uncomfortable. Notably, other gymnasts have also opted for bodysuits in recent years. Marina Nekrasova of Azerbaijan wore one at a World Cup event in 2019, and Yana Elkeki of Qatar wore a bodysuit that covered up her upper legs at the 2018 World Championships in Doha. Perhaps someone is stopped by the leotards, and I wanted to show that it's possible that there are no limits, said Nekrasova, who competes for a nation where leotards are not always accepted as appropriate. I often hear that parents take the girls out of gymnastics classes because of the leotards and it's a pity that they leave. You can change the uniform so you can train and try. I hope I managed to show that. Meanwhile, American superstar Simone Biles at 4'8 said that she prefers leotards because they lengthen the leg and make her appear taller. But that doesn't mean she's against what other girls prefer. But I stand with their decision to wear whatever they please and whatever makes them feel comfortable," she said. So if anyone out there wants to wear a unitard or leotard, it's totally up to you. American gymnast Sunisa Lee, who competes alongside Biles, agrees. It's a really good idea. I think those are really cool. I like it a lot because people should be able to wear what they feel comfortable in, and it shouldn't be a leotard if you don't want to wear it. Perhaps that's what's most important having the chance to freely choose what one is most comfortable with. After all, that was the reason why the German team took a stance in 2021. According to an expert, I don't believe that a person who is a victim of sexualization is responsible for desexualizing themselves. It makes sense, right? On that note, it is vital that, that they're offering this now is going to be very helpful to athletes who are just trying to exercise their athleticism. This they sentiment is echoed by more people. What I want to wear is going to impede my ability to perform at the top level. That is the key, right? It is a start, yes, but at the end of the day, the pressure of combating sexualization and sexual abuse in gymnastics belongs squarely at the feet and in the hands and around the necks and hanging constantly over the heads of the sport's sexual abusers and their lily-livered enablers. Just to say that a uniform is not going to change uh, systemic abuse uh, that clearly is a problem that needs to be addressed. But that rings true, unfortunately. Nevertheless, having the freedom to choose what to wear is a step towards progress, and that matters too. That said, it is good to know that more and more female athletes are taking the steps to help make a better future for young athletes by speaking out against inappropriate behavior and changing uniforms so that they are comfortable and not distracted by their appearance and how they're being perceived by viewers. So, even though there is no real solution to sexualization and objectification, there are steps that can be taken towards making a better future for female athletes. Whether it's through raising awareness, acknowledgement, or education, there is so much more that can be done to help female athletes feel safe and seen. And since we're on the topic of the Olympics, watch this to see which athletes have a high chance of being at this year's Olympic Games.